All right, welcome back. Um, we get some work done on the Chevelle gun. I uh, got some more goodies for it. Um, yeah, teasing you with that six cylinder diesel right there. Still got to get to work on that too. Um, not too familiar with them. I just want to build it because it'd be cool and it'd be cool to put in a square body Chevy. So here's what I got. Uh, well, obviously I got already got the front part of the car done. So I got some more no Noico stuff, uh, some different stuff this time though. I got some more of the silver stuff up here. Because I'm going to do the back. We get all that done. It can look real nice. Alright, this is the other stuff. This is a sound deadener and it's also uh, kind of like a fire retardant. So I'm going to put this underneath the dashboard. I bought, it's still, it's still on its way. I got from an original parts group, the uh, um, original GM firewall pad. that has all the whole cutouts for it and everything. And it's uh, AC delete because um, this car doesn't have AC. Hot rods don't have AC. Um, so yeah, I got that coming. Original parts group takes a little longer than obviously Amazon. So I uh, got this Noiko stuff off Amazon. All right, so here it is. Comes with instructions. Don't need those. But it's thicker, it's actually a little lighter than the butyl backed sound deadener for the floor. And this is, uh, I believe it's 100 and, or 310 or 315 mil. 315 mil. No coal liner, car heat and sound insulation. So I figured that will work out very good underneath the dash. Uh, compared to the asbestos crap that was in there before if they don't want that again so and then well, I'll be doing that too tonight getting the back of the car done so I'm gonna get her after her. there it is sticks on pretty good it's not as forgiving as the um, butyl backed. This is 80 mil down here. That stuff just rolls right on. So, all right, get the other side down and get back to in the back. All right, all done for the night. So I think it's in the back done. Just one pad. I gotta take the um seat belts out on that side yet getting late so well late enough for me now it's time to go inside and have a couple beers and go to bed Alan. So these are seat belts that I bought off original parts group. They have the original GM logo on it. Got those for the kids when I had the back seat in. Back seat I got out of a uh, junkyard. Um, it's over uh, 
Over by Watertown, Wisconsin. The guys there are freaking nuts. It's uh, really, it's a uh, old, old car, muscle car, junkyard, but when they call it junkyard, it's a freaking junkyard. They don't have much left. Not much that has been picked over, uh, but it's one of the last ones around um, our area that actually lets you go walk them. Uh, we went out there and um, <coughs> looking for the back seat, the floor part, or the, the actual seat part. Because the car came with the backrest, but it didn't come with the bottom. Uh, I went and walked around, there was a lot of eight bodies. Uh, GM had A bodies, but none of them were worth even looking at. And we come back up to, well, my dad couldn't even come out to the, um, come out with me walking because he had tennis shoes on. And they wouldn't let you go out unless you had boots on. The um, whole place was flooded. There's cars underwater everywhere. Um, but I'd come back up and I'm like, yeah, I couldn't find anything. And the, guy, the old man, after they got done yelling at each other, uh, it was like, oh, you're looking for, uh, uh, see for a rear seat for a Chevelle? Yeah, in what year? 70s? I think I might have something like that from an uh, Oldsmobile or whatever. I'm like, okay, where? He's like, oh, one of those, one of those uh, buses I have out there. I got a bunch of storage in them. I'm like, so we walked inside this beaten up bus and uh, just full of seats. It was unbelievable. Um, all, of course, run down and everything. But I ended up finding one that was for a convertible car, so it actually didn't actually fit in here. I had to cut these parts out here on either side and just make it fit just so the kids could ride and through the seat belts in just for a little bit of safety. Seat belts back in. That's as far as up, far up as I'm going until I get that the package tray done. After the body shop takes care of that. Like I said, that's probably going to be like ten years from now. Did uh, dust her off. So she doesn't look like she's been sitting for 20 years. I don't know if I ever showed a video of this, but this is all. This is uh, where the part's gonna sit. I don't know if I told you before too. It's all brand new underneath. See the brake lines. All brand new fuel lines. Very well, but it's all painted. Disc brake converting kit on the front. Uh, probably gonna upgrade the brake, the uh, pads and rotors and um, calipers and everything because they look like they belong on a Ford Ranger. Yes, yeah, so.
that's the reason why I bought the car is because it's a very good foundation. All right, so I'm done sweating for the night. Got the sound dudner taken care of in the Chevelle. Um, next, like I think I mentioned before, is once I get the uh, um, firewall pad put in, then I can run the painless wiring harness, put the uh, fuse block in and everything, and get that laid out. Um, the motor is what I'm planning on after that. That and dashboard. Those are a couple of the most expensive pieces in this project right now. That right there and the transmission. So, yeah, it's not just a trash bag. Let's see. Uh, so what the motor is is a 454 board 30 over. Um, great job always by Pakes uh, Engine Machine Shop in Janesville, Wisconsin. They also did my. Uh, they did the work on my Perkins diesel. Well, uh, they did the machine work on it and everything. Uh, gave me the pistons and I think they cleaned up, they polished the, uh, the crankshaft and everything on that too. So, yeah, shout out to them. Those guys are awesome. But yeah, the motor, got all the bottom end from them too. Crankshaft, pistons, rods, everything. Uh, going through them for the top end kit. It's going to be that Edelbrock top end kit. Um, it's going to be rated at 540 horse, 539 foot pounds of torque. It's for a Mark IV 454 big block. Uh, the, the motor came out of a 1980 um, camper. And it had, I think it, believe it had less than 30,000 miles on it, and they parked it. So the motor should be good. It is a two bolt main, but I mean my other 454 was a two bolt main. To get a four bolt main is whatever. You can still put decent torque and horsepower out of them. There's that, and then uh, transmission is going to be through um, uh, bowtieoverdrives.com. Uh, it's going to be a 700 R4. Uh, I'm looking into it, and it's going to be a stage three one that they have. Um, that's uh, built to handle over, I think it's close to 700 horsepower. So it should driving this. You kind of got to work at it because the brakes are. Well, the old motor didn't build up much vacuum, so the brakes were a little soft. And, you got you kind of had to get used to it. Um, sometimes it didn't want to idle, so you got to feather, feather a throttle, put your foot on the brake and the throttle at the same time. You said do that all the time with my old Chevelle. Um, that was a 350, a tired one, but um, yeah, I think that's the, the best part about these old cars is you got to work to drive them. I and mean, you're not sitting there on your stupid phone driving. So, I would rather uh, have more cars like these on the road than new ones. Uh, makes a uh, driver more responsible for what they're doing. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, they uh, less safety in them too. So, maybe then you won't feel so secure in your little bubble. I mean, just throw a V6 in or a straight six and make it all steel again. Why not? Is it all plastic and electronic garbage that you have in them? Self driving bullshit? Maybe then you'll have less stupid drivers up on the road. So, yeah. Like I said, I uh, get a little angry sometimes, so there's another rant for you. Anyway, I'm done for the night, and I'm going to go to bed, and I go fishing in the morning with my dad. Uh, first time he'll be out my boat since I've owned it. Had the damn thing for like six years, six, seven years now. So, I'm going to go catch some bass. All right, have a good night.